Well, hello loves. Um, welcome back to our coloring page series. And um, I wanted to quickly go over what we did today before we dive into the video and kind of explain a little bit of, of what I did. Um, so this is a watercolor. It's all about watercolor and gouache today. And um, gouache is like a watercolor except it's more opaque. And so I started, <clears throat> let me see here, I was solely going to do gouache and um, I it was too opaque for me and it got a little kind of muddy and I couldn't get it watered down and, and let me just say this right off the bat, I am not a watercolor expert or gouache. I use it very seldomly and I'm trying to expand and th that's what the coloring pages are for is for us to be able to really kind of get out some of the supplies that we don't typically use and play with them with the coloring pages because um, you've downloaded the coloring pages and you can print them out as many times as you want and you can kind of just experiment over and over with them without having to redraw or recreate something. So um, so I am. that's what I'm doing as well and I'm using some of the supplies that that I don't often use. Last week was markers and then I'm also including some mixed media in there because well that's me. <laughs> that's what I like. So this was the first experiment. Uh, there were a couple. Um, this was completely all gouache. I'm trying to decide which one. This was all gouache and I just wasn't sure about how it looked. It um, Some of it was really great and some of it wasn't so great because um, it just was really um, kind of grainy almost and maybe I'm not using it right. I watered it down the way that I thought that I should and so I thought well maybe I'll try. So then I moved over to um, watercolor and the watercolors that I'm using are Crayola watercolors. That's what I had and that's what this is about and that's always what creating is about is about using what you've got and making it work for what for what you need and so I just used and these were fantastic. Um, I know a lot of artists who use some really fancy fun um, uh, watercolors and then I know some that just use what they have and um, that are super inexpensive and I love them. So this one this one was the second round of um, watercolor with just watercolor and I couldn't get it dark enough so this one was too dark and this one was not dark enough. I couldn't get that kind of contrast that I wanted so I combined the two and so I added started adding some gouache in there into some of that those darker spots perfection. It was the recipe. So I wanted to explain that to you before I started and I also want to show you just a couple of things um, before we get into the video and I just love, love, love this. So I'm going to set this over here and I want to show you the two brushes that I used. I used a larger, this is more of a watercolor. It's not specific for watercolor, but it's a longer, it's got a longer um, brush um, area and it's, point, it's pointed. And part of the reason why I used the longer one, and I, and I actually did some research and looked up watercolor and how to do it and all that kind of stuff. But the, the bigger the brush like this, the more water it holds. And so as you're painting, that water is released and it works really well with the watercolors. I did need to have a smaller um, brush for some of the finer details but in for the most part I use the large one and in my piece you'll notice that I didn't do it perfectly I didn't get to all of the edges and all of the areas and there are areas that have that have kind of really stark lines but that's the beauty of watercolor and gouache and so I want you to let go of any perfection and just play and and you know, try different things out. Print out a lot of these. I did print this. The first couple, this one is on a lighter paper that I did. Um, then I went to, I printed onto a watercolor paper and it was super easy with your downloads. You can, this is a 9 by 12 and I'll have links to again all of the supplies and everything that I used in the YouTube description box. But I just went ahead and printed this on a regular 
um, inexpensive piece of watercolor paper that's 9 by 12 and um, it worked beautifully. That's the versatility of these coloring pages. Okay, so um, brushes and then a couple, th I want to just kind of go over a couple things with you. So for my watercolors, what I did was I just sprayed them to kind of get them activated. So I'm just going to spray some right now. So I've got them all sprayed to get them kind of ready and juicy and all that good stuff. And then for my gouache, I'm using Arteza gouache and um, these are wonderful. The colors, I played with them a couple weeks ago, not in this fashion, but as with completely mixed media. And um, I just loved them. Let me grab, let's see, this color here. So I had two palettes out when I created this. I had one for my gouache. And then you can see over here, let me move this over, and you'll see throughout the video as well that I had one for my watercolors and it worked out really well. And this is just parchment paper that I had laid down. You could, you know, use a plate or whatever, um, but it worked out well for what I was what I was doing. And of course, this is all just play and experimenting and all that kind of stuff. So I had two jars of water. I had one I have one that has kind of dirty water and one that has a little bit more clean water. This one's not exactly clean any longer because I just got done painting. So um, I'm going to get my brush nice and wet and I just want to just quickly do this because I know a lot of you probably have not used water. Maybe you have. Um, maybe I'm the only one who hasn't used watercolor. But um, I mix my colors and watercolors can be mixed. Um, just like any other color and you can see how I can kind of mix that up there to get kind of that orangey feel and then I'm just going to add water to my little pile of goodness over here dipping my brush into my water and I'm going to you can do a wet on wet which I don't like because I have no control over the the um, watercolor and I'm so this is dry and I'm just going to come in and lay in my my paint and I'm not I just I'm paying attention to the lines but not really too much I'm just gonna come in and play and I'm picking up different colors as I go you could mix them if you want um, the hardest part of this for me was letting it dry because I if you know me at all I um, work straight through on my pieces. I use a heat tool to dry in between so that I can move on and keep going. Well, the best thing for you to do with your watercolor and gouache is to let it do its thing. So um, the pooling of the watercolor is critical to the beauty of it. So here's my watercolor here. And it's um, nice and wet and in its place and to let it do its thing and get all the modeling and all the colors and all the goodness you'd need to just let it dry like that and you can use a heat tool and I used a heat tool part of the time but then I just let it dry because you don't want to you want to let it pool where it would where it naturally would so now I've got so let me grab so I've got my watercolor here and I know that I'm gonna want some darker color in the center and so the gouache is less opaque and um, light and so I can pick up my let me put this in the camera pick up my gouache and I'm doing it just like but you can see the color the intensity of the color is very different and now I can come back in and have it kind of mix with, see how it's kind of mixing out a little bit? Ugh, oh, so much fun. But that intense, intense color I can add into areas that I want. So let me just show you the leaves, because there's only a few parts to this, this piece. And let me go, actually, let me go over. So I usually start with my watercolor first because I start with my lightest color first and then add in my darker colors. So here's my watercolor on my leaves. And then I'm going to come back over to my gouache and just 
add it into that mixture of water that I already have going on from my watercolor and let it flow. <clears throat> now, the one thing I do want to tell you is, so let your areas dry. And so if I am working next to another wet area and I happen to get another color into that wet area, it all bleeds together. So it's important to let this one do this one, do these over here. These are the same colors. It's kind of moving all over the place. Um, and then go up here and do another color. And over here, keep that your color, keep them separate until they're dry. Because watch what happens when I let's. I'm just going to bring this color down here. If I come in here, and you can see how this is kind of outside the line. If I come in here and I start adding to this, it crosses over in the lines. It starts bleeding into the other areas. So I would not do that. I would just move on to another, I would move on to, say, this area up here. And then let that one, and then come up here. So, um, and then, then you're going to have to get to a point where you have to let things dry. <clears throat> and um, that was the hardest part for me because I like to create fast. I like have an idea. I don't want to stop. I want to keep going. So that's my water watercolor. Here's my gouache. And let go of perfection for this. Let go of any ideas of how you might think that it's supposed to look because the watercolor kind of has a mind of its own. And um, that's the beauty of it. So come back in here with some watercolor. Add maybe a little bit of darker green in there. Get some gouache. <clears throat> Add that in here. And you're good to go. So now let me grab, let's see, was it this color that I really liked? One of these colors. I dug into it and I was like, oh, it was the good thing. Oh, I think I mixed the two. So I mixed a little bit of this green and a little bit of this blue to get me a really good <clears throat> turquoise color. Okay, and I'm going to add some water to this. Okay, so you, <clears throat> you can see how I touched this area where my flower is still wet and that red is bleeding into that. So I did that a lot and it's not the end of the world. It just, just be aware of that if you're not used to working with watercolor. And so I want to do this one really quick and then we'll move on and we'll get going. Okay, so I've got my pattern down or my color down and I've just grabbed some salt from the from the cabinet and, and <clears throat> If you drop your salt onto your wet um, paint, watercolor, gouache, um, the salt soaks up the paint and leaves a white mark. And let me show you. <clears throat> That's what all these little spots are. All these little, like, tiny little water rings. Gorgeous. Simply gorgeous. So you can do that as much or as little as you want. Um, I did it a lot on one and it was a, too much. You know, sometimes I think if some is good, more is better. It's not always the case. Um, <clears throat> okay, so then I came back and added, once I kind of got my base color down for the background and the bottom, I came back and I added, um, where did it go? <laughs> gloss gel. And the reason I chose gloss is because um, the, the paint will just slide right off of it. 
if I'd chosen matte, matte has a ground to it, or if I'd chosen clear gesso or anything like that, it has a ground to it and the paint would tend to stick to it a little bit. And that's not what I wanted. I wanted that pattern to show up. So I would put my base color down and then I put a slightly darker color over the top once I got my stenciled area down with my gloss gel. Um, then I came back over it and that um, that paint just kind of ran right off and the initial color underneath shows through. So that was my way of adding my mixed media goodness in there and I love it. It's so good. I used um, Faber-Castell's um, pit pen to go around the outside edges and I did it very messily because I, I didn't want it, it, I wanted it to be fun, playful, have kind of that um, drawing kind of feel. And then I added charcoal pencil and some black <clears throat> soft pastel. And that's it. So I used four products today. Watercolor, gouache, matte gel, um, my, my markings, uh, my uh, pens, my pencils. So Faber-Castell pen. General's charcoal pencil and some black soft pastel. That's it, my friends. Oh, I did use a stencil. <laughs> oh, yeah, that might be important. <clears throat> this is Modern Pattern 2 stencil. I use that. I use this one for the background right here. And then I use the bottom one down here because I thought it looked like lace. <clears throat> That's it. Okay. All right, my friends, let's get going. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them down below in the YouTube description box. And again, all of the supplies, links, and all that stuff will be down below. All right, have fun creating.